Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There is so much to pray for. We want to continue to pray for our president and our nation. We want to continue to pray for our local community that God will continue to open great doors for influence and for us to share our testimonies. And we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. I do want to announce, I just heard yesterday that Brother Norman Sermano has been released from the hospital. He was in ICU, he was in the COVID unit, and he is back home. And we are talking about him coming back and being in church. So we're very excited uh, to announce that. Perhaps you have a special and spoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our president and our nation. We pray that you will continue to keep your hands firmly upon this country. God, we also pray for our local community. You will continue to open up doors of opportunity that we can continue to share this great message and truth. And Father, I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you'll open up the windows of heaven, continue to guide our steps and pour out your provision, your protection, and your power. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. I want to draw your attention, several verses of scripture found here in the book of Exodus, chapter number 32, and we want to begin reading in verse number 25. Exodus 32 and 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me, and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And Moses said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. It's a famous passage of scripture, one that's probably not outside the realm of our memory and even our understanding. But I just felt in meditation this morning to talk about and to pose this question and entitle this short devotion this morning, who is on the Lord's side? Just to give you a little bit of contextual background here, you know that Moses had gone up to receive the Ten Commandments. He was there in the cleft of a rock for many, many days. And in his absence, there was chaos. Um, right here, it reveals it was under the direction of Aaron that people made a golden calf. They stripped naked, they engaged in fornication. And essentially what happened is although they were removed from Egypt, Egypt is still very much alive and well in the hearts and minds of God's people. The golden calf, the fornication, the nakedness, all of this was against God's word, God's ways, and God's will. Moses, of course, comes down from the mount. He comes upon this scene and he's absolutely filled with wrath. But Moses asks a critical question here in this, in this scene, in this scene of absolute moral chaos and idolatrous worship. He says, who is on the Lord's 
side. And then, of course, what unfolds is the Levites gather with Moses. There must have been others that gathered with Moses. And he says, every man put your sword on and go through the camp and slay utterly. And the Bible records that as they slayed utterly, that there were family members, there were acquaintances, there were friends, there were neighbors, people that had no doubt become familiar. They were, there were relationships that now were completely severed and cut by the edge of the sword because of sinfulness. That was a sin absolutely against God. Idolatry, fornication. And so this is the question that I'm posing again today. Who is on the Lord's side? You know, we're living in a world where just things that were once vices are now norms. Marijuana has been legalized. There's now legislation in the state of Oregon where they're really attempting to legalize hard drugs like LSD and heroin and other drugs. This is insanity. Some of the things that are taking place even in elementary schools where parents are now forbidden to um, deny their children from being exposed to some type of transgenderism and maybe some gender questioning and gender choosing for, for small children. This is insanity. People being able to embrace all kinds of idolatrous mentalities and, and thinking and just ca total chaos is taking place in our world today. The question echoes through the corridors of the word of God and through the corridors of time. Who is on the Lord's side? The Bible teaches us in 1 Peter chapter number 4 that judgment must begin in the house of God. And so when the pastor has to draw lines that are lines in the word of God, those are not lines to destroy people. Those are not lines to kill people. Those are lines that keep people saved. We just need to make sure that we're on the right side of the line. When you're on the job and somebody tells a dirty joke, who's going to be on the Lord's side? When you're in an environment where people are talking about doing something that is against the word of God and against the teachings of and the convictions of the local church, who is on the Lord's side? If you're working for an employer, maybe that embraces some of the things that are in this world that are that are philosophical and, and are alternative thinking, alternative living, alternative lifestyle, who is on the Lord's side? When you take the Lord's side, that is not a sign of weakness. That is a sign of strength. And really what you're doing is you're actually giving hope to whatever environment that internally you're making that decision by saying, you know what, I am on the Lord's side on this. I know I'm here. I'm, I might be at work. I might be at school. I might be in a situation and a scenario where I'm present, but I'm not in agreement It was the Apostle Paul that asked this question in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? On and on and on. So I asked that question, who is on the Lord's side? Here we are about to enter 2021. And I think it's becoming more and more obvious with every day that passes that as our world continues to sink into a lower moral understanding, completely abandoning the things of God and the word of God as they adopt immorality on the left and on the right and just erratic, chaotic thinking that is absolutely insanity. It's becoming more and more obvious that we are on the Lord's side. And that is a unique posture because not only is it saying, I'm standing with God, his word, his will, and his ways, but there's hope for you. Because if I'm standing on the Lord's side and I'm doing so because of my understanding of the word of God, the will of God, and the ways of God, 
that's also hope for you that you can make the changes needed so you can be on the Lord's side. There's always hope. There's always hope. But God has to have a witness. God has to have somebody on the job, in the school, in a, in a situation in your neighborhood, maybe with your neighbors, maybe with if you live in an HOA, whatever the situation is. Who is on the Lord's side? As we go into 2021, I think we need a renewed comprehension and understanding we're not, gonna, we're not gonna submit to a golden calf. We're not gonna submit to the ways of Egypt. We're not gonna submit to the idolatry of Egypt. We're not gonna submit to the sexual practices of Egypt. We're not gonna, we're not gonna submit to the, the lack of dress, which is nakedness. This, is, this, this scripture in all of its raw understanding is hard to believe that God's people would see such great miracles and the death angel passing over and the walls of water on both sides and God biting or God guiding them by a pillar of fire by night and cloud by day and God providing all that he provided. Who is on the Lord's side? It may not, Moses, Moses may be in that mountain for many, many days. Things may not happen when I want them to, but you know what? I'm not budging. And I believe there's a whole lot of people that are watching this here today that are not budging because we made up our minds a long time ago that we are on the Lord's side, regardless of family, regardless of relationships. The Bible even spells this out. Neighbors, acquaintances, comrades, family, this is how God is judging sin. And judgment must begin first at the house of God. And so I know that mercy rejoices against judgment. And so this is a time of repentance. It's a time of deeper self-examination. It's a time of pursuing transparency and and holiness, and separation, and the things that are required in the Word of God, the will of God, and to understand the ways of God. It's a great time of revival. So, who is on the Lord's side? God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.